Hey everybody, welcome back to the gym. It's Rahul, cool. and today we're going to be doing episode 3 of, I guess, my Road to Worlds. For all of you who are here because of the top 8 and double top 4 list, here it is. This is the exact list we played. There was not a greedy die in the deck, popular to contrary belief. Or contrary to popular belief, that's what I meant. I'm sorry, I'm so really tired from the weekend. So what I'm going to talk about today is the deck itself. It's very simple. I'm going to talk about the event itself, which I really enjoyed, Florida Regionals, and my tournament experience, which are all three big things that I want to cover in this video, this video. It might be a little longer than others, but if you guys stick with me to the end, I promise you'll have a good time. So let's start off with the deck. Coming into the event, I knew I wanted to play a dark variant of some shape or form. I know Vespa Queen, I told you guys in the other video that Vespa Queen wasn't the play for this weekend, and I found that out a couple weeks ago just because of how the meta was shifting, where everyone was going with their decks. Uh, I tested the Gyarados deck that made top 32 a lot. That was the deck I was going to play for this event. That was the deck that I wanted to play more than any other deck. As the event grew closer, in my testing circle, I couldn't win a single game. I think one of the testing days I went 0-8 with the deck, including against favorable matchups like Volcanion. So I just put the deck aside and I was like, I need to think about everything again. And I was like, what is the most linear deck that has the least amount of clunking issues? It was Darkrai, Tina, Garbodor, or Evitol Garb. Both decks, one which won the event, Evitol Garb, piloted by Azul, and this, Darkrai Tina Garb, which was piloted by myself, Bradley Curcio, and Ryan Sablehouse. So I started talking to Ryan, and he tells me, hey, I think we're going to play Dark Tina. And I said, okay. And the night before, we talk about the deck. We try to figure out any small changes. He looks at me and says, Escape rope for PCL or Olympia, Pokemon Center Lady. Think about it. I do. Next morning, we both decide that Olympia is the better option. And, um, yeah, we just, we, we hesitantly go into the event because we don't know in a field of 620 people what the actual meta is going to be. Because you never know. Deck is super straightforward. Let's just hop into the event. Olympia, I'll just give a quick explanation on that. The Olympia is legitimately just because it took the place of the escape rope in the deck that we had originally, and it heals 30 and switches. So you can kind of like use whatever attacker you want without being like, hey, I'm going to get stuck in the active spot, and my one rope, or my one, or my float stone, if you have a uh, fighting fear belt attached, you're going to have to use energies to retreat, so it's like, my one rope is going to have to come in handy here. Or you have an Olympia, which you can now theoretically play five of because of VS Seeker. Olympia won me so many games just because people would have to try to Lysander stall against me to break Giratina Lock, and I would just Olympia. <laughs> Sorry. And then, it also, in the mirror match, and against Evatol Mew, or Evatol Garb, makes the math really funky for them, so it's making a two shot into a three shot, and when you're doing that in the mirror match, you're taking two shots respectively, so it's better for you. You're winning the trade overall. So that's that's Olympia, and the one enhanced timer was also really with the clutch all day, and I really loved it. So I'll just jump into the event itself. Orlando Regionals, run by some of my favorite people, Vince Crackler, Denise Crackler, Renee Curry, and Randy Curry. Um... All four known to run some of the best events, so they everyone had high expectations coming into this event. But there was going to be like 600 plus masters, so nobody knew what was going to happen. Was like Arizona Part Two going to happen? Was it going to be like I don't, nobody? Everyone was scared. I was astonished at how near flawlessly this event was run. I cannot believe that we played nine rounds of Pokemon with over 600 plus people, had a lunch break, and were out of there before 11 p.m. Like, I just literally cannot believe that happened on day one. We get to the event. It was a super standard system. Pre-reg, turn in, walk up, hand in your deck list, give him your pop ID, pick up your event badge. I love event badges. It's so cool. It, like, makes you feel a little more... Um, important for being there and on the back of the event badge which I thought was super 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 awesome was schedules they said by this time we'll be doing this this time we'll be doing this and they met almost every single one which I thought was awesome um, 
so that's pretty much it. Tournament starts. We turn in our deck list. Everything's running really smoothly. They were running on time, so we were like, <laughs> we got to get uh, do stuff fast. We turn in our deck lists. Round one, I'm all. I, I have to pull up my things on the phone because uh, I forgot. Like, I don't. I've. It's been like a two days, and I'm already like dying because I can't remember anything. So the first round I play against Dan Wallace, who's a Poké Dad. Uh, he tells me he hasn't been playing very long. His son has been playing a lot longer, and he's playing Eva Tell Mute, the Friday Night one. And I'm on stream, of course. The first game of the day, I'm nervous, I'm prone to making mistakes, and I'm on stream. Uh, game one, I set up as prop, as I'm supposed to, and I still almost lose the game. But with the getting Garbodor out, and him overbenching on Shamans, I just capitalized and knocked everything out that I needed to, took the game. Game two, I had a dead hand. I picked it up in like three turns. I didn't want to play it. Game three, there was a really crucial part. I know you guys saw it on stream. Probably Squeaky's going to upload the video and you're going to be like, Rahul, what are you doing with your life? But he did 130 damage to my Dark Guy who had 80 damage on it with a Fighting Fury belt. And I did the math in my head. And for some reason, I thought that was a knockout. So I moved it to the discard and nobody corrected me. So I just continued playing. And had I not done that, I had game next turn. So oops. <laughs> I just made it harder on myself. But... I just kind of won that one. Yeah. Dan was a super nice guy. Shout out to his son for winning juniors uh, with Dark Tina as well. Congratulations. I'm um, glad I could help you. Um, yeah. Second round, I played against Gary Robbins, uh, one of my local friends from the meta deck. He was also playing uh, Dark Tina Garb, but instead he had two enhanced hammer. And so while we were playing the deck, he didn't know what I had text and stuff like that. And so the Olympia effectively won me both games just because... I could, his his goal was to knock out my Giratina that had the energies attached to it, so I could do less damage, but when he lies standard, he'd be like, well, you have a Fighting Fear Belt on it already, so I'm just going to sit here and stall, and I was just like, I'm just going to Olympia, and do it again, and that, that was pretty much the game. So I'm 2-0, lunch break, Chick-fil-A is sick, come back, we're kind of almost late. Round 3, I'm up against Brandon Cantu, super well-known player, super smart player, known to play some we weird, wacky decks, he's playing Gyarados. I knew he was playing Gyarados because I'm also very good friends with him. Which is a super, super good matchup for me. I just had to say Chaos Wheel like three times and the game's over. I almost lost the series because all three games I could not get an attack off till turn four. And I was like, man, this deck is running really, really bad. I think game two, I had like eight cards left in my deck. And all f I had four double dragons all in the deck. And Brian was like, how? How are you not drawing anything? So I, but like the matchup is just that one-sided that I can just win. Hmm. Excuse me. Round four, I played against Seth Enos, who was playing Evatom Mew. This round, he he just kind of like was doing things. And game one, I set up as proper and like I hit like two of my three max elixirs and just won. Because Dark Rag does a lot of damage, and I was one shotting his fight, Fright Night Evatols, which is like the one thing he doesn't want to happen. Like the moment his Fright Night Evatols can start getting one shot and have a garb on the field, the game just gets super, super bad for him. Because I can also Olympia. Game two, had a bad hand, picked it up, we moved to game three. Game three went just as I wanted it to, with me setting up and him not, um, unfortunately for him. And Olympia pretty much just ruined all of his math uh, for Fright Nights. So I just, yeah. I'm 4-0 at this point. I'm up against Sky Tucker, who's playing Dark Itina, Garb as well. And again, the Olympia he played Ninja Boy and an Umbreon in his in his variant. And I played the Enhanced Hammer in Olympia. So I came out on top because of the mirror match. Because I enhanced hammer away one of his energies, and I would just Giratina lock him. And his option was to go big dark eye. And when he did that, I would just Olympia into my dark rider or another Tina and I just hit it and I would just win and so it was, it was a quick two games because of Olympia I like I know you guys are gonna be like oh, give us some more details I'm like I don't remember that much I, I don't because Olympia just did things and my deck is so linear that 90% of what I have to do is attach an energy and choose which attacker to use like that's why I picked this deck to play as well so I'm 5-0 and I'm like hey I just have to dodge my friend Ryan for one more round, and we're both making day two. 
lo and behold, I'm playing Ryan in 60 card mirror. We look at each other, we take a look at the top tables to see what decks are up there, and um, we see that there's two Rainbow Roads doing very, very well, and a Vile Plume Box with Reg Ice. We didn't know what was in the deck, so we were very, very scared of it at the time. We thought it was an auto loss, and the Rainbow Road's really, really bad as well. So winning would put one of us into day two, but then they would hit one of the Rainbow Roads or Plume Boxes probably, and losing would put somebody in the bracket with those guys again. So we took a strategic ID. I had 501, confident in our ability to win one more game before losing two. So, yeah. And we took the tie and we just like sat there and kind of like figured out what matchups are good for us, what are bad for us, and like where what the road is at, at the top tables to like scout out. And like that's very important. Information is one of the most important thing players can use. Round 7, I get Franklin Orarte, another member of the meta deck, another good friend of mine, playing Gyarados. Unfortunately for Franklin, Gyarados is a super, super easy matchup for me. Game 1, he has a very, very bad hand. He has a... I think he just starts Magikarp, draw passes. And, um... I have, like, Giratina active, so I float stone it, put down a Shaman, attach to the Shaman. I had, like, two Max Luxor in my hand, so I Max Luxor hit it, and I just bounced, knocked him out. Game 2, he has a Sycamore... But he is an acrobike and doesn't get another basic, so I repeat with Darkrai this time. And yeah, that was the game. I donked him twice. Sorry, Franklin. I'm 601, locked into day two. In my eyes, I just want to ID the next one and then play the last one out so I'm secure. Um, I go, I sit down against Michael Hopkins. Um, I offer the ID and. He says, I think we have to play it out. And I was like, oh yeah, I got down paired to you, 6-1. So we play it out. Uh, he's Mewtwo Garb, Mega Mewtwo Garb, and I'm Dark Ratina. Game one, uh, he makes a crucial gameplay error where he attaches a DCE, Lysanders, and Shaman knocks me out after I Chaos Wield and took his prizes already. And, um, yeah, because of that, um, he didn't get a game loss. We both just got warnings because it was super reversible. But... He just kind of scooped the game because he's like, I can't win um, if I can't even knock out a Shaman this turn. So he just picked it up and we moved to the next one. And he got uh, a Trubbish down, the Floatstone, and then I got like a turn two. Oh, we did some stuff and then I Chaos Wheeled. I waited, I waited to Chaos Wheel. And then I Lysandered it up, the Trubbish, knocked it out with Chaos Wheel, and got my Stadium to stuck stick. And he was like, well, Lysander... And I was like, Olympia. And he's like, alright, next good good series, good luck. So that was it. Here I am at 701. Um, not expecting to be here whatsoever over the course of the weekend. Um, I'm like, pretty happy. Um, but mostly tired. Um, and then I go up against Alex Shemansky, someone who just aged up from seniors. Very, very smart kid. Um, you can tell that Seniors was his, like, playing field, and he dominated for, like, a really good time. So I was like, hey, do you want an ID? Because he was playing Plume Box, and he said no. So we start playing it up, and game one, I start finding out what counts are in his deck, start kind of, like, figuring out what's going on with the deck, and I pretty much come into a dominant enough position where I can win the game in two turns. He uses Ice Beam. I stay as... Uh, I'm paralyzed. I have Garbodor out, so I can use items. I have two Trainer's Mails with like a 10 card deck. I use the first one to find the Olympia, I whiff it. I use the second one to find the Olympia, I whiff it, and then I pick up my cards, because I needed to switch, retreat, go into... go back into Gear and continuously lock him, because he doesn't play that many basic energy. I presume two, maybe a third. I didn't see one in three games. I don't think anyone else did as well. So, if they play f 12 energy in that deck, it's super, super clunky. So, game two, he just kind of clunked out. We moved to a quick game three. And game three, I was... K uh, what I did was, I kind of like was gauging and figured out he didn't really play any other switch cards other than Manaphy. So I got... I didn't get Garb out. But I had a good enough hand that I didn't want to sick. I didn't have a sycamore, but I had a good enough hand where I could just sit, attach a couple energies to Darkrai, and wait. 
wait to see where he put the rainbow energy. W wherever he put the energy, I was going to chase that. This feels like two Shaman, a Plume, and like two Oddish. And he... Jira level balls for Jirachi. Puts it down, puts a DDE on it. Or a DCE on it. And like passes to me. And I'm like, okay, draw a pass. He's like, draw a pass, we draw a pass, draw a pass, like three more turns. And then he hesitantly attaches a rainbow to the Jirachi. And passes. And he's like, sitting on the ninja boy. And he's like, hmm... I can ninja boy, but like I don't know what I want yet, and like I need to retreat out of the active. And he's like, Rahul's just letting me attach energy. What a dummy! And I just looked at him, and I was like, attach double dragon, Lysander knockout. And he asked me, why didn't you use it the turn before? Because I didn't have to. Why is a DCE on the board a threat to me? Um. Like I just didn't have to knock out that Jirachi the turn before. I could wait because he doesn't play any switching cards. He's just mana fee and energies, so he needs to attach to the active to retreat it. And attached to something to attack with it. Like, what are you gonna do? Retreat into Jirachi, hit me for ten. Like, poor power to you. But I don't have a DD attached yet. I'm holding it. So that was pretty much that game. I was pretty shocked I won going into day two at 801. Um, first seed felt really good. Uh, I had to win like two games total, and I was like, I can do that. I go up against Igor Costa round one day two. Uh, he's playing Mewtwo Garb. The series got really, really close because game three, I couldn't um, get a stadium. So his shrine was still in play as I was hitting him. And he would continuously Lysander around and damage change onto it. Olympia literally saved me that game because I would get out of that and heal a little bit. Game got close. He got down to two prizes. I was at one. I had end the previous turn, and he needed to, I think, not hit a Lysander, and he had, like, three Via Seekers and two Lysander in the discard, and I was just like, do you have it? Like, I end you with, like, a 15-card deck, and he's like, no, and then we just, I won, because it was really close, but the matchup is on paper very, very good, and playing it through the tournament, because they only play Garb and not Hex, it was really, really good for me. If they played Garb and Hex, I'm in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So I'm 10 one feeling really good. I got Alex Shemansky again. Sit across the table. I'm at 28 match points, Alex is at 27, I offer the ID, because I didn't really want to play the matchup again, and at 29 match points, winning one more would secure me 100% of the time in, and with him, in his resistance, winning one more would put him at 31, which is the bubble, but it's like almost certainly he's going to be in. So we took the tie, felt fantastic, got to look around, uh, see what decks were doing well, got to grab a bite to eat, it was cool. Uh, I'm only doing one of my next three, and I'm into cut. So I was like, how, how do I choke this bad? Let's see how I pull it off. Um, next round, I get Addison Powell playing Gyarados. But his list was super unorthodox, because it still played Balloons. He didn't play Octillery. He played two Shaman and a Meow Sticky X. And Meow Sticky X lets you move one damage counter from one of your Pokemon to one of their Pokemon as an ability. Yeah, I was like, what? <sighs> okay. Uh... I lost game one because I continuously dead drew after getting a turn one chaos or like a turn three chaos wheel and couldn't get a second attacker powered up. Game two I won because Kiratina and game three it sort of I was like draw passing for like five turns, let him take like four prizes I wanna say. Um and all those things had twenty damage on them, including his Gyarados. And then I was slowly powering up a Giratina. I got the Giratina off and end him in the same turn. So he couldn't get what he needed, but he got a VS Seeker for a teammates to get, like, I think a VS Seeker and a Ranger or something, and I knocked something else out and paralleled him to three, I believe, and he, like, VS Seeker for teammates again, got some more cards, and he, like, flipped his hand, it was, like, Ranger, DC, and, like, one buddy-buddy, and I was like, yeah, that's not enough to win you this game, sorry, pal, <laughs> and, um, because he can't Ranger Lysander Hand on the same turn, so even after having a super, super slow start, again, the matchup is so favorable that I just can do that. I'm at 32 match points. I'm locked in the top 8. Feels really, really good out of a 620 man event. Uh, next round, I get to go against Azul, a really good friend of mine. He also eventual tournament winner. Borrowed like majority of the attackers in my deck from him because I don't own cards that much. Uh, now I have money, so I have no excuse. Uh, mm. And um, we just tied. Uh, if it was anyone other than Azul, I would have played it out because. Uh, 
Evatol Garb is actually a really bad matchup for this deck. Uh, I think it's one of the scariest matchups. Barring fairies. Barring fairies. Yeah. And, um... So we tied. Uh, I, I didn't want to... Azul's a friend of mine, and I understand you guys are going to be like, hey, there's no friends in Pokemon. I'm like, yeah, there are. Come on, like... <laughs> If I even if I played him, I probably would have lost. <laughs> like I'll be honest, I didn't. And I didn't want to play it out. I honestly wanted to play. No, I didn't want to play as more games than I have to. So 34 match points now. I 33 match points. There was a scenario in which I could get a 30 pointer the next round. Um, if if the Gyarados player had beaten the Volcanion player, if the Volcanion player wins, Daniel Lopez, it would be at 31 match points, meaning there was no reason for me to play it out. But if Oh, the Gyarados player had lost, I would have played against either Mega Mewtwo Garbodor, Vile Plume Box, or one of two Fairy decks. And three of those four decks, I don't want in top cut. I don't want them, I don't want to ID them in the top cut, and them sneaking in at like 8th seed, having to play them again. So if I had hit one of the Fairy guys, or the Vile Plume Box, I would have to play it out, because I want to knock them out. And I'm number one seed no matter what happens at this point. Alex Shemansky is like two points below me. Doesn't matter. I'm going to be the first seed. I didn't get... Uh, well, Daniel Lopez won with Volcano against Gyarados. I don't know how, but he's a god. So we took the tie because it did not matter for standings whatsoever. And, um... Yeah, we moved into top eight. And, uh... I knew, deep in my heart... That I was going to get one of my teammates playing the exact same 60. And I wasn't okay with it. But it was like, I think like .05 or something on opponent's opponents that I got one of my teammates as opposed to John Orgel playing Mewtwo Garb, which is a much more positive matchup. Um, yeah, it was a much more positive matchup than a mirror match. 60 card mirror, which is always dumb. Um, we're, we, I get, standings go up. Um, it's it's one of the most stacked top eights I've seen in a long time. Myself, Azul, um, Alex Shemansky, um, Igor Costa, who's back, and I'm very glad. It was a fun time hanging out with you this weekend, Igor. Um, Ryan, Brad, and like, and like John Orgel, and whoever was the last guy. Oh, Daniel Lopez. Yeah, so it was like, eight name players that all made cut which is insane for a 620 man tournament and the most insane thing on top of that is that me brad and ryan were playing the same 60 russell lapar over at someone's pc was playing a very similar list to ours with like a two card difference i want to say so we all worked together and collaborated on this one russell is not to be excluded here he was like two games off of making top eight as well so props to him um then we like pairings went up and then I had Ryan. <laughs> Oops. And then so Ryan and I play game one. I'm legitimately draw passing. The deck has crapped out on me officially. Um, no supporter, no ultra ball, no trainer's mail, nothing. Just a handful of energies and VS seekers. Awesome. Um, at one point Ryan felt so bad because we're really good friends. Um, he like kind of like handed me a soda. He's like, hey man. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I just like took a sip. I'm like, thanks, Ryan. Um, game And then game two, I was 10 damage off of winning the game. So that was pretty cool. But then I was also dead drawing. So Ryan kind of got me again. That's what happens. It's in the 60 card mirror. It's legitimately about whoever draws a little worse is going to lose the game. There is no outplaying someone in a 60 card mirror. Um... As much as you'd like to believe it, there isn't. So, yeah, I pretty much lost to two bad hands. Um, cannot complain, however. Uh, my only loss being in top eight. Got 350 bucks. There's a couple boxes. Matt, sick Matt, if anyone wants to buy that, probably hit me up. Overall, I really, really enjoyed this event. It ran really smoothly. Uh, probably one of my favorite ones to go to, not only because I did well, but because... I wasn't complaining about how much time there was in between rounds. 
I wasn't complaining about, hey, what am I going to get out of here? I wasn't thinking about all that. I was literally just having, I was just literally playing Pokemon, and the organizers were making it so I could just play. And everyone was so, so friendly. The whole event, Randy, Renee, Vince, Denise, they were all just there for me. Like they were there, they were like interacting with players the whole weekend. They were making sure we were having a good time. They were asking if everything was all right, if there's anything they could do to do better. And that's something I really like to see. Organizers, they go to their players and say, hey, is everything going okay? Is there anything we need to do better? Are there any problems with this event right now? Because we can start adapting, start making fixes on the go. And like, the amount, like, I, I know a lot of organizers have pride. I, I don't mean to take shots at anybody, but like, that that humbleness, that humility from these organizers is one of my favorite things about them. And I don't know, it was super, super cool to play in this event, have a good time, and get fifth, I guess, at the largest regionals in history, which is super cool. Uh, congrats again to Azul for winning the whole thing. I'll probably have an interview with him later this week. He's flying back right now. We were all hanging out last night, playing Resistance. Yeah, um... All in all, that's about it. Uh, we'll have more top eight interviews coming up. This is the deck for everyone who's wondering. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll do an interview with Ryan and Brad as well. Uh, it's the same sixty, but uh, I'm sure you guys want to see how they got here, especially Ryan because he beat like five fairy decks to make top uh, top eight. So thank you guys all for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys all for the support. I saw a lot of you guys this weekend. Uh, like four or five people came up to me. Um, just, just said hi, thank you for all the great work you do, um, ask me to sign some stuff, whatever, that's the kind of stuff that keeps me going, like, I don't do this for anything but the community, and the fact that you guys are actually appreciative of what I do, just warms my heart, so, I'm sorry to get, like, super real right now, but, like, thank you, thank you guys so much for your, like, unending support, um, and other than that, please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, Subscribe if you'd like, and um, the next tournament I'll see you guys at, along with most of the Chaos crew, is uh, Philadelphia Regionals. So we'll be there, which is in three weeks. So see you guys there, and goodbye, my friends.